Hello and welcome to this new and challenging message, Draw Out into the Deep. And today we are going to read a passage from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 5. Start reading from verse 1. And it came to pass, as the crowd pressed on him to hear the word of God, that he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. You see, here we have the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was the greatest preacher who has ever crossed this planet. And we read several times in the previous chapters that his word was with authority. And now we may wonder why was his word with authority in contrast to the word of the scribes and the Pharisees? And the answer we find in Acts chapter 1, where it says in verse 1, concerning the things that Jesus started both to do and to teach. You see, the doing and the teaching of Christ were in perfect harmony with each other. His life stood behind his message. And that's why his, his word, his message was with authority. And there we get already our first lesson. If we want our testimony to have authority and power, our life must stand behind our message. That was the case with Christ. He could say, I am altogether what I tell you, that what I tell you, and that's why there was moral power. So let us have really par uh, truth in the inward parts, as it says in uh, Psalm 51. We need to practice the truth and then there will be moral power in testimony. In verse 2 it continues and it says, And he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen, having come down from them, were washing their nets. Now, the Lord Jesus, he had open eyes while he was preaching. And he realized there was a great crowd in front of him. And some of the people, probably because there were so many, they couldn't listen to the message. They couldn't hear him. So what did Christ do? He was looking for opportunities to spread the message to more people. And he saw there at the lake there were boats and he was thinking, okay, I can use one boat and if I go a little bit on the lake, there will be a better sound for the people and they can all hear the word of God. And here's our second lesson that we can learn. We shall look for opportunities how we can spread the word of God, how we can make it available for many people. We can do that through the internet. We can do that through different means. We can be creative also in spreading the word of God. In verse 3 we read, And getting into one of the ships, which was Simon's, he asked him to draw out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the crowds out of the ship. Now this is very interesting. The Lord Jesus, he is getting in one of the boats, and that belongs to Simon Peter. Who was Simon Peter? Now we read in John chapter 1 that Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, he brought him, he led Simon to the Lord Jesus. And at that point, Jesus gave him a new name, Peter. And that shows us that he got saved in that moment because he received a new name from the Lord. But Peter had not yet started to follow the Lord consequently. And so we find him here doing his business. It's not wrong to do our business, not at all, but it seems that there's a spiritual meaning in this. We will see later on that Peter, he, fo he forsook everything and followed the Lord. But at this point, it seems that his heart was not yet really, really attached to the Lord Jesus, although he was already saved. Now, it's very touching to see what the Lord does. He is asking Peter to use his boat. You see, here we find the humble Christ. Christ, he was humble enough to ask other people for help. Think of John chapter 4, where Christ, he was exhausted sitting at the well of Jacob, asking a Samaritan woman for help. Give me something to drink. You see, we show also humility by realizing we need the help of others. That's the lesson that we can learn from this. Let us ask help for others when we realize that we need help from others. 
Let us not be too proud for this. And now the Lord is getting in one of uh, in Simon's boat and he continues teaching the crowd from the boat. And so more people can listen to the word of God. And then in verse 4, something very interesting happens. But when he ceased speaking, he said to Simon, draw out into the deep and let down your nets for a haul. You see, before Christ was speaking to many people, teaching them, and now suddenly he is giving a private lesson to Simon Peter. And he has a very private and personal message for him. And he says, Peter, I want you to get out into the deep and to let your nets down for a haul. And that was like a challenge to Simon Peter's faith. Simon Peter was a fisherman and they had fished the whole night and they caught nothing at all. But no, now Christ tells him, Simon, I want you to do something which doesn't make sense, humanly speaking, but I want you to trust me. And you see, sometimes Christ is speaking with us in the same way. He wants us to draw out into the deep. That means to leave things behind and to get into the risk of doing something where we have really to lean up on the Lord completely. Sometimes the Lord is telling us to leave our country or to leave our neighborhood or to move to a different place. Think of Abraham. The Lord of glory, the God of glory appeared unto Abraham and told him, leave your country. Now Abraham was wondering, where shall I go? What did God answer? I'll show you where to go. And step by step, he had to follow the leading of the Lord. Now this may even happen in 2021, that the Lord is showing us one step and we have to obey for the first step and then the Lord will show us the next step. And now what is Simon Peter's reaction? Verse 5, And Simon answering said to him, Master, having labored through the whole night, we have taken nothing. You see, that's humanly, uh, we can understand that very well. Simon was just leaning upon his own logical thinking. And many times we act in the same way. We consider things from a human point of view. And we forget that there is a living God and we should also count upon him and not only on our natural intelligence. You see, we read in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean upon your own understanding. And that's what Simon Peter had to learn here in this situation. So first of all, he brings out the natural arguments. But then he says something very important. In verse four, 5 at the end, he says, but at your word, I will let down the net. And you see, that's what really counts. Obedience to the word of God. Obedience when the Lord is giving us a special task, when he shows us that we shall do something for him, even though it doesn't make any sense, humanly speaking, he wants us to obey him. Someone once said, obey God and leave all the consequences to him. You see, and sometimes we really have to do this. That's what faith does. Faith is not only reasoning with our intelligence, but faith is really including the living God and says, if God tells me to do so, I want to obey God and leave the consequences to him. And because Peter does this, he will see the glory of God. And that's what we find in verse 6. And having done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net broke. You see, because of his obedience, he saw the glory of the Lord. In John chapter 11, verse 40, the Lord Jesus said to Martha something wonderful, and it's like a principle that we can also apply to our lives. Did I not tell you that if thou wouldest believe, thou wouldest see the glory of God? You see, sometimes we can only see the glory of the Lord if we believe him and if we go forward in obedience. And because Peter has done this, he really got a revelation of the greatness of Christ. In verse 7 we read, And they beckoned to their partners who were in the other ship to come and help them, and they came and filled both the ships so that they were sinking. 
Now here we get another very important lesson for all of us. The Lord has placed us together with other believers and we should also work together if it is possible. You see, sometimes we really need the help of each other. Think of Barnabas. Barnabas, he saw the grace of God in a certain place and how God had done wonderful things. I think it's in Acts chapter 11. And what does he do? He says, oh, I know a person, Saul or Paul, and he has the, the, the gift of teaching. And I think I'll get him here and he can be a great help and we can work together. And because he did that, many people got blessed and edified. So if we realize that we can work together with others, let us ask the Lord. Maybe he wants us to ask someone to join together in ministry. And then in verse 8 it says, But Simon Peter, seeing it, fell at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, Lord. Now, Simon Peter had seen the glory of God and suddenly he realizes the greatness of the person who is standing beside him. Suddenly he realizes that this is really the Son of God and he is the creator of all things. He has the power even to command the fishes to go into the net. And in considering and realizing the greatness of this person, Simon Peter also realizes his own nothingness. And he realizes what Paul writes in Romans 7 verse 18, I know that in me that is in my flesh that dwelleth no good thing. That's a very important lesson for all of us that we need to learn. You see, God wants to use us in ministry. And to be useful for the Lord in ministry, there are, I think, three lessons that we can learn here in this passage. The first thing is, we need to be aware of the greatness and the glory of the Lord Jesus. We really need to have our eyes opened for his greatness and we need to realize what a privilege it is to, to serve such a great and wonderful Lord. But secondly, we also need to realize that we are nothing in ourselves. We have no reason to boast whatsoever we have nothing in ourselves, but we are dependent servants. That's very important to realize. And we will only really realize this if we get a glimpse of his glory and greatness. Think of Job. Job, he was proud in his heart. And we read in Job chapter 42 that Job, after he got a great revelation of the greatness and glory of God, that he said, with the hearing of the ear, I heard of you, but now my eye sees you. And that's why I confess, I repent, and in, I'm just dust and ashes. You see, these things, they go together. A, a revelation of the glory of God, the awareness of his greatness, and also the awareness and the realization that we are nothing in ourselves. Very important. And that's what we are going to see here. That's what we see here in verse 8, Peter's reaction. And the, the reason was, verse 9, For astonishment had laid hold on him and all those who were with him at the hall of fishes which they had taken. So he was really overwhelmed by the things that Christ had done. He had done exceedingly far, exceedingly above what he had thought. And you see, Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if we would trust him more, if we would really draw out into the deep at his word, we would see more of his glory. I am absolutely sure of this. And that would lead us to a greater appreciation of his person because we are going to experience him. The more we trust him, the more we are going to experience his faithfulness. Now, verse 10, And in like manner also on James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon Peter. You see, because one man was obedient at the word of Christ, he followed the word of Christ, and he saw the glory of the Lord, other people got influenced as well. And it was a testimony for others. You see, if you will be obedient to the Lord, and if you put all your confidence and all your trust in the Lord, 
there will be a testimony for others for the glory of God and others will be impressed and will be encouraged to trust the Lord as well. And that's a wonderful result. But then the Lord says with something wonderful, and Jesus said to Simon, fear not, from now on you will be catching man. You see, the Lord Jesus, immediately he takes away the fear from Simon Peter. He tells him, you don't have to be afraid. Yes, I am the great I am. I am the creator of the universe. I am the eternal God. That is true. But you don't have to be afraid because I am your savior and I love you with an infinite love. And you don't have to be afraid in my presence. Yes, it is right to fear the Lord. There's a wonderful verse in the book of Proverbs, in Proverbs chapter 14, where it says in verse 26, Proverbs 14, 26 says, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children will have a place of refuge. You see, Simon Peter, he really feared the Lord in that situation, but that led to a deep confidence because Christ himself revealed himself to him. And he gives him a new ministry. You see, all this is like the result of Simon Peter's obedience. The Lord Jesus wanted to prepare him for a new ministry. He should be an evangelist. And we are going to see in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 2, how mightily the Lord Jesus used him as an evangelist. It was Simon Peter who preached the first Christian sermon and 3,000 souls got saved on one day. You see, it all starts with a personal obedience and personal experience with Christ in small things. But then the Lord can bring out great things out of it. Simon Peter, he still had to learn many, many lessons, but this was part of the preparation for his ministry. And what a grace! Although he doubted, first of all, the Lord showed him his glory and he gave him, he extended his ministry. Now, in verse 11, we get the result. We get the, the reaction of Peter and the others. And it says, And having run the ships on shore, leaving all, they followed him. We have seen that Peter got saved in John chapter 1, but he had not yet fully followed the Lord. And sometimes it's the same with us. Probably you got saved one day, but after some time you, you start living your life and yeah, probably you're reading your Bible and sometimes you're praying, but it's not really following the Lord with, with consequence and with, with devotedness and with, with love. But you see, Christ wants to bring you to the point where he gets such an appreciation in your life where you appreciate him so much and where you are so much attracted to him that you leave other things behind. That's what Paul did, the Apostle Paul. He says, one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, stretching out for the things that are before, that are ahead. You see, that's what it's God's goal for you also in 2021, to look for the things that are ahead of you. And to have that one goal, to become more and more acquainted with this wonderful Lord and Savior. Azaf in Psalm 73, verse 25, he says, Who do I have in the heavens? And besides you, I find no pleasure in anything whatsoever in this world. You see, that was a man who had seen God. And in the same way, we can also experience today that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if God is asking you to draw out into the deep, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean up on your own understanding, and you are going to see the glory of God.